And for the headlines, weather forecast, the inaugural storm of the year will be called Aghon. Local news, Unabia will not be overlooked by Clarex in the upcoming CDO elections. A suspected top commander of the CTG surrendered to the military in Bukidnon. COWD has reopened negotiations with Kobe regarding the disputed payables issue. The breach of contract case involving Metropac versus COWD will be pursued. National News PhilHealth unveils a benefits package for illness related to heat. Lilianes is encouraging the release of evidence regarding the desktop lot. International News a Japanese court approves a man's request to change his family name due to his same-sex relationship. Bettina, revealed as Manu Ibe's accomplice, provides that love can't be bought. Ben and Ben's song, Comets, serves as a reminder that people come and go. Sports In the UAAP, Femi Edu and Christian Porter pledge their commitment to Ateneo. In the UAAP, UP triumphs over UST in a shootout to secure a spot in the men's football finals. International feature Taylor Swift and Beyonce demonstrate a profitable fusion of pop and fashion. National feature Lea Salonga expresses that her return to Broadway is exceptionally meaningful. Trivia Is it possible that someone is concealing the cure for cancer? Good morning, Philippines. Magandang umaga, Luzon. Ug mayo adla Visayas ug Mindanao. Today is Monday, May 13, 2024. I am Athalia Pisaniel. Weather forecast. The inaugural storm of the year will be called Aghon. The Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration predicts that the first storm of 2024 named Aghon will likely form or enter the Philippine area of responsibility early next week. Cloud clusters spotted outside PAR may develop into a low-pressure area, potentially becoming a storm as it enters the country particularly affecting areas in Mindanao, according to weather specialist Rhea Torres. Meanwhile, most parts of the country will experience hot weather due to easterly winds, with isolated downpours on thunderstorms expected in some areas during late afternoon or night, influenced by the combined effects of easterly winds and localized thunderstorms. Pagasa also forecasts overcast skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms in Batanes and Cagayan due to the frontal system, which delineates a transition boundary between two air masses of differing properties. Local News Unabia will not be overlooked by Clarex in the upcoming CDO elections. Misamis Oriental Governor Peter Onabia directly stated that he will not challenge incumbent city mayor Rolando Clarix Uy in the upcoming local elections in the city. This comes after the governor confirmed their preparations to enter the political arena of the city in the 2025 elections. Onabia made the announcement following his introduction to Misamis Oriental Sanguniang Panlalawigan board members Gregorio Sabal III, Win Militante, PDRRMO head Fernando D. Jr., and others who have recently transferred their voter registration to the city yesterday. Unabia emphasizes continued support for Mayor Clarex, citing their long standing friendship since their time as a congressman of the city and province. The governor also assured that he respects Clarex's political lineup for the 2025 elections in the city. Even if Onabia planned to field 
his own candidates for councillor in the first and second districts of the city next year. Governor Onabia mentioned that his candidates will run independently, but jokingly remarked to Mayor Clarex that their group hopes for a vote straight campaign to ensure victory against Team Paglao. A suspected top commander of the CTG surrendered to the military in Bukidnon. The leadership of the communist terrorist group in Bukidnon reportedly collapsed as Brigade General Michelle Anayron and her military battalions persuaded Randy Bayot, a.k.a. Governor, to abandon the armed struggle and return to the government. Major General Jose Maria Cuerpo II praised Bayot's surrender as a significant victory. Facilitated by the efforts of army commanders and resulting in the surrender of many of his com comrades. Bayot, a former CTG regional official, faced multiple charges before his return. He surrendered with his comrades, bringing several rifles in a similar fashion to Armando de Luniag, alias Ambo, who surrendered in 2021. COWD has reopened negotiations with Kobe regarding the disputed payables issue. The Cagayan de Oro Water District is set to resume negotiations with Metro Pacific Water through Cagayan de Oro Bulk Water Incorporated to address the ongoing water billing issue in the city. This comes after COWD Board of Director Dr. Jerry Cano confirmed their resolution to reconcile the conflicting contracts between the two parties. Tanya stated that COWD has no intention of shirking any obligations unless there is a clear basis. The direction of Kobe and COWD clashed during two differing parametrics formulas used in calculating water rates and charges. COWD has not confirmed whether they will take legal action against Kobe for breach of contract as the letter has delayed paying their bills. Furthermore, MetroPAC challenged COWD to take negotiations seriously in resolving the water billing issue. As stated by Attorney Roberto Rodrigo, the company's senior legal counsel, Rodrigo emphasized that while they have not closed their doors, COWD needs to address the issue seriously. It's worth noting that legal action was previously mentioned by MetroPAC. If the payable dispute between the two parties remains unresolved. The breach of contract case involving MetroPAC versus COWD will be pursued. MetroPAC Water Company is considering legal action against Cagayan de Oro Water District over a billing dispute with Cagayan de Oro Bulk Water Incorporated. Attorney Roberto Rodrigo, MetroPAC Water Senior Legal Counsel, highlighted the possibility of a breach contract lawsuit to safeguard their interests. Kobe demanded 470 million pesos in our years from COWD, which COWD contests claiming discrepancies in the calculations and bookkeeping. Dr. Jerry Cano, a COW board director, reaffirmed the commitment to provide water services to residents and proposed resolving the conflict in court rather than politicizing it. Mayor Rolando Clarex always suggested involving third-party accounting experts to address the issue impartially and avoid bias in resolution. So we visited a bike shop and interviewed them. So let's watch this. Okay. Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, I'm Jesmo. Um, Prima Electric Vehicle. Under po niya si Giko Bike Shop. So dito kami po ngayon ay located sa Capistrano del Pilar. Uh, near po sa Pilgrim's College at katapat lang po na uh, Rasini Bag and Luggage. Yes. So sa kami po, Ay, meron po kami mga available product po na electric bike. Meron din kami mga latest po na model, yung mga scooter po namin at saka uh, pila po po sa bike. Meron po din po kami mga bike accessories, mga bike parts at mga electric bike parts din po. So, na available din po kami sa mga mechanic. Uh, Nag-aayos uh, rin po kami ng mga bike, e-bike at sa mga electric scooter. 
So, yung sa mga payment po namin, available po kami cash, uh, credit card, at saka home credit. Sa bike naman po namin, available po siya 30% po down payment, at saka sa e-bike naman po, available po siya 40% down payment. So, murang-mura lang po, available po kayo, available po kayo anytime, uh, pwede po makapunta kayo dito po sa amin. Uh, for contact number po, pwede po yung matawagan yung Manig, uh, number namin, Sir 917-304-3863. Uh, uh, under po siya kang Prima po, yung Giko Bike Shop po. Uh, kami uh, matagal na po, mga almost 8 po o na mga 9 years po, ganun po. Meron po ba kayong affect kami na... Sa amin, ito lang po yung main branch namin, pero soon, baka po... So again po, uh, Prima Electric Bike Company po, under po, under po siya, under rin po niya si Kiko Bike Depot. So again, available po yung bike parts and electric bike natin, available po yung mga scooter at marami pa pong iba. So visit lang po kayo po, uh, Capistrano del Pilar, uh, kalapit lang po ng Rasini at sa likod lang po ng Pilgrims College.
National News Field Health unveils a benefits package for illnesses related to heat. An official from Field Health announced on Thursday that members requiring hospitalization due to extreme heat related illnesses can access a benefit package specifically tailored for such conditions. According to Ray Baliena, Acting Vice President of the Corporate Affairs Group of Field Health, the package worth 8450 covers hospital charges and professional fees of attending physicians. Furthermore, Baliana reported that PhilHealth Board has approved the substantial increase in benefits for breast cancer patients. Baliana reported that the PhilHealth Board has approved a substantial increase in benefits for breast cancer patients, now totaling 1.4 million pesos, up to the from the previous 100,000 pesos effective March 30, 2024. He also mentioned plans to enhance benefits packages for prostate and cervical cancer patients this year. Lilianes is encouraging the release of evidence regarding the desktop plot. The Philippine National Police is urging former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV to release any evidence he has regarding the alleged destabilization plot aimed at ousting President Ferdinand Marcos Jr which supposedly involves certain PNP officials. According to Colonel Jean Fajardo, acting chief and spokesperson of the PNP PIO, if Chilianes possesses sufficient evidence impl implicating two active PNP officials in the plot, he should directly share it with the PNP chief, General Romel Francisco Marbil. Fajardo emphasized that they have not received any information implicating PNP officials in the disabilization plot, as stated by their chief, and reiterated the high morale among police officers due to ongoing programs that not deduct any benefits from them. <music> International News a Japanese court approves a man's request to change his family name due to his same-sex relationship. A man living with his same-sex partner in Japan has been granted permission by a family court to adopt his partner's surname, considering their relationship akin to marriage, the man revealed on Thursday. Referred to as Akikazu Takami, the man expressed his happiness with the Nagoya family court's March 14 decision, describing it as handled sincerely. The court's ruling, which allowed a surname change for a same-sex couple based on their marriage-like relationship, is considered rare, according to Takami's lawyer. While same-sex marriages or civil unions are not legally recognized in Japan, the court acknowledged the couple's stable life centered on child-rearing, similar to heterosexual marriages. Takami, who lives with his partner in Aichi Prefecture, has also filed a lawsuit arguing for the recognition of same-sex marriage as unconstitutional, following a previous ruling that deemed the lack of recognition unconstitutional but denied their compensation demand. Entertainment. Bettina revealed as Manu Ibe's accomplice proves that love can't be bought. In the latest episode of Can't Buy Me Love aired on Wednesday, Bettina was unveiled as Manu Ibe's accomplice. Titled Mystery Solved, the episode saw Wilson attempting to uncover the identity of Manu Ibe's partner. Much to their surprise, Manu Ibe arrived at the specified location provided by Cindy leaving Cindy speechless as she faced arrest. Cindy disclosed that she had confided the secret only to Bettina, implicating her as the mastermind behind the misfortunes plaguing the Chu family. As they headed to the police station, Manong Ibe fled, 
vowing to assist Batima in pursuing the couple once more. Baron Ben's song Comets serves as a reminder that people come and go. OPM band Ben and Ben has released their new song Comets with the intention of imparting to their fans the uh, acceptance of the OPM band Ben and Ben has released their new song Comets with the intention of imparting to their fans the acceptance of the transient nature of relationships. Initially performed during a Facebook Live session in 2020, but held back for release. The band felt the track needed time to mature. After four years, Miguel Benjamin felt that their experiences had brought maturity and wisdom, prompting them to fi finally unveil the song. Keyboardist Pat Lasaten emphasized the strengthening of their bond amid life's challenges. Paolo Benjamin expressed the song's message of embracing memories and growth despite the departure of people in one's life. Through comments, Ben and Ben seeks to encourage listeners to acknowledge life's transient nature and appreciate the lessons learned from past experiences. The song is now available on various streaming platforms. Sports in the UAAP, Femi Edu and Christian Porter pledged their commitment to Ateneo. Ateneo de Manila University has announced the addition of promising talents Christian Porter and Femi Edu to their roster for the upcoming UAAP Season 87. Porter, who expressed his deep connection to the Ateneo tradition, reunites with former teammates and looks forward to making new memories on the collegiate stage. Meanwhile, Edu cited Ateneo's academic reputation as a key factor in his decision to join the Blue Eagles. Coach Tab Baldwin expressed excitement over the addition of both players, highlighting their potential contributions to the team. Edu's transition from England basketball style is seen as a challenge, while Porter's versatility and basketball IQ are noted strengths. Ateneo aims to further develop their skills and integrate them into the team system. The Blue Eagles aim to bounce back from their previous seasons, performance, and compete at a high level in the upcoming tournament. In the UAAP, UP triumphs over UST in a shootout to secure a spot in the men's football finals. The University of the Philippines clinched a spot in the UAP Season 86 Men's Football Finals after a marathon penalty shootout lasting almost four hours, securing a 1-1 victory over their opponents. Coach Popoy Clarino expressed gratitude to the UP community for their support, highlighting the team's dedication on the field. UP will face defending champion for Eastern University in the finals next Thursday, at the Rizal Memorial Stadium, Clarino emphasized the team's focus to, on the upcoming match against a strong FEU squad and acknowledged the contributions of departing players Carlo Fernandez and Carlos Orale from UST. <music> International Feature Taylor Swift and Beyonce demonstrate a profitable fusion of pop and fashion. The resurgence of mega concerts amid the COVID-19 pandemic, headlined by Beyonce and Taylor Swift, underscores the lucrative fusion of fashion brands and pop icons. Throughout history, stage costumes have served as a powerful medium for designers to gain widespread exposure with music stars often using fashion to communicate messages. The endorsement of a pop star can significantly boost a brand's sales, as seen with Beyonce's impact on rhinestone cowboy hats and Taylor Swift's influence on Versace and Alexander McQueen. Swift's evolving image, marked by her Victorian Gothic aesthetic in her latest album, The Tortured Poets Department, raises speculation among fans about her potential transition into a more controversial figure, further fueling anticipation for her upcoming performances in Paris. <music> no.
national feature. Lea Salonga expresses that her return to Broadway is exceptionally meaningful. Lea Salonga's global fan base celebrated as news broke of her return to Broadway. The Manhattan Theater Club revealed on April 8 that their upcoming season would feature Stephen Sundem's old friends with Salonga and Bernadette Peters reprising their roles. The production is set to premiere on March 25 next year and the Samuel J. Friedman Theater in New York City after a pre-Broadway run in Los Angeles. Speaking with ABS-CBN News, Salonga expressed her enthusiasm for her Broadway comeback, highlighting the significance of honoring Sundance's legacy. Her previous Broadway appearance was in Here Lies Love, which garnered four Tony Award nominations. Salonga shared this exciting development with her followers on Instagram. Trivia, is it possible that someone is concealing the cure for cancer? On March 25, 2020, an enduring misconception circulated on social media claimed that a cure for cancer exists but is concealed from the public. However, experts debunk this myth, emphasizing the complexity of cancer and the ongoing progress in treatments. They highlighted the economic impracticality and logistical challenges of concealing such a cure, baked by statistical analysis showing the likelihood of exposure within a few years. And that's the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching Pinoy Rob news channel, Lagayan de Oro. And I request once more to support and subscribe and turn on notification for more updates and more info. Again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.